morning guys, welcome to Flory Models Daily Show. Here we are on Wednesday the 5th of uh, October 2016. Uh, thank you very much for everybody who joined us last night. It was our biggest night ever. Um, the biggest audience we've ever had, which was quite a lot. And for some reason we picked up a load of new subscribers. So welcome to Flory Models. Obviously I think you find your way via the show. It just seemed to be after the show finished, came in, we had a pile of... Uh, of emails, notifications saying we've got new subscribers. Remember, if you are new, um, to get into the main forum, you do have to register for it. Just use your real name uh, because obviously we don't have, um, you know, avatar names and, you know, fake names and all the rest of it. Just use your real name. We're a nice friendly bunch uh, and it just makes things a hell of a lot easier, especially when you're reading out people's names. Okay. So on last night's live show, we drew this one. Um, so this is actually going to Justin Carlson. Now, I think you're in the US judging by your email address. I have literally just emailed you now, okay? So if you can let me have your address, I'll get this great kit off to you. And obviously you're gonna get a full set of the, the Story Model Sanders as well. And I'll get that shipped to wherever you are in the world. But I'm saying, judging by the email address, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be USA, but we'll go from there. Anyway, from my point of view today, I'm gonna to carry on with this guy, okay? So this particular one should be pretty straightforward now. I'm gonna show you about sanding. Uh, we used a little bit of filler job on it, my styrene filler, we spoke about it on last night's show as well. So I'm gonna clean all this bad boy up, get it all sorted, and then we can do, I don't think we're gonna to need to, but probably a little bit of just rescribing work, tiny bit of re-riveting maybe, uh, and then this one is ready for primer that quick. Uh, that's what we say, beautiful kit. Goes together really, really well. Very excited about the paint scheme. Uh, I might throw it open to you. We've got two options on this. Um, I'm not sure which one to go for yet. I've moved the things. We can go with a nice yellow tail or a black tail. Um, I'm thinking the black tail might look better anyway, but we'll see what we think. Okay, so that one's coming on really nicely. And then uh, probably around about lunchtime I'll do it. You can see the final part of this guy, which is obviously the Chieftain. Fantastic build, fantastic kit. Everybody should build it. If you ever wanted to build a tank, build this one. It falls together. It is a dream, apart from the tracks and the uh, sprockets. Get your extra poly caps out of your extras bag and put them in and it'll save you a little bit of heartache. But apart from that, no problem at all. And I did fix the light back, which is on there again. So I keep knocking it off. Uh, but generally, a lot of fun, uh, and you can follow that one, uh, and that will then complete that build. What this means, then hopefully, this afternoon, I've got a couple of deliveries coming in, which I'll share with you again, uh, and then tomorrow we can then get on with, um, I'm going to do a review of the Mr., um, I don't know what they call them, Mr., subscribers I suppose that's what it would be uh, and things like that so I might try and do that late this afternoon but we'll see how today goes but first up today it's time to crack on with this guy so okay who says modeling is easy there's always something that crops up and we're back to that old age problem of lighting again so literally as we can see yes flicking on off on off so sorry about this if somebody gets an epileptic fit during the next part but yes i've got bulb trouble again in the lighting department now to be honest i have ordered a new uh lighting thing for the studio and as some of you know we had a play with this thing which is great don't get me wrong but it's completely overpowered for what we need in here uh, and it is just far too big okay so this is the led utility light set if it's your only light source that's no problem but because we've got all of this up here we don't really need it. So the option was about sticking my third one of those panel light in there, but I've tried it and it's far too strong. Literally, it's blinding. But I did pick up, because Ant put them on the forum, some of these. Now these are those cheap things, they were literally, I think a fiver, uh, little LED floodlights, uh, and they look great. So I've got a couple of these, I must admit, I was down at my um, home bargains this week, uh, and I'm thinking that maybe we could do the same as Ant's done and bolt them underneath like that. We put one there and one up here, and that should give us enough light, and it's direct light down. So really, that is the thing with it, because as you can see down here, we have finished this guy. He is already, I've done all the gear, everything is completed, and I was just about to literally come along and pop him into the uh, spray bay, and away we go, and but do it like that. But unfortunately, I've got, can't really see it from his angle, but this is flicking. Oh, it looks like he's died now. No, it's back. So as I say, it's really hard to film with that doing. Obviously, it's gonna give everyone a migraine and all the rest of it. Not only that, it's going ding, 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 and driving me mad. 
So I think what I'm gonna to have to do this afternoon is postpone putting that into primer and uh, spend a bit of time and try and work out a lighting rig because this isn't exactly plug and play. Uh, it's gonna to need to go through a switch box uh, and everything else like that because it's designed, I think, for external use. Uh, but Ant had them set up in his spray bay over his modeling bench and it looked absolutely fine. Uh, and I'm thinking for the money, it's a bargain. If we can do this on a tenner and we have good crystal clear white light and it's positionable so I can sort of, you know, move them around a little bit, it should be fantastic and it will save me having to put one of those big things in there because that's my only option at the moment uh, because don't forget this is and this is the thing that's a little bit weird that's my brand new light uh, that is a new base unit brand new tubes if you remember literally we're only talking a couple of weeks ago it failed to replace the tubes then we ended up having to replace the entire lamp with the other one and now I'm thinking like what is going on it just seems to be a conspiracy theory because to be honest we went through I think two bulbs in the last six years and now all of a sudden within three or four well it's probably what three months since we did this maybe less uh we've gone through an entire light and more flickering and all the rest of it and that is the trouble it's pretty old school in today's you know energy efficiency and energy efficient light bulbs and everything else like that tubes are just so 1990s shall we say so i'm going to try and do everything led trust me it is worth it if you're like me and got all this running when it wasn't led the electric bill was a little bit more now we're leds we're hardly using anything in here and it's a thing about temperature because this light does get hot as well um but leds obviously they're cool they just don't get hot and all the rest of it so I'm going to spend a little bit of time and we're going to try and wire up a new lighting system for the spray booth. Okay, so this is just a, a test mock-up. I'm going to talk you through what I've got. So I had to pop out, go and get some electrical bits because I thought I had them all, but obviously not always the way. So anyway, this is it. There we go. Isn't that slightly different? It makes so much more space. Um, they're daylight, so they're 6,500 Kelvin, is it? So it's pretty close. Now I'm probably gonna have to put a filter on those, but that's what I do with all my lights anyway. They have a, a little bit of filter paper over them just to tone it down a bit. But there we go, so how nice is that? So literally, without trying to blind it, we've got these two mini LED spotlights, which came from a local bargain shop, I said that Ant mentioned, and I must admit I was in there on Sunday and just picked up the last two. They do want ones with passive sensors, but we don't really want those. For the moment, I've literally just jerry-rigged it, just to see if it would work. I have got down here before everyone starts complaining, but we have got down here a proper box, and I've got a nice switch for it as well so we can turn it on and off but that's it i must admit that's so much better the light seems quite good um i you know I, there's no flicker in there at all which is obviously the main thing being leds you don't have that trouble but really that's worked exceptionally well so i'm hoping that roughly i can try and do this it will be something when the camera is in place properly like this and off we go and we'll be absolutely fine so as long as that light is to the correct uh, kelvin uh, sync thing which 6500 is roughly what the other ones the other one's 6700 so I should be able to just do the white balance manually on the c camera which is situated up there and we should be good to, but now I haven't got that bloody great lamp hanging in there it's great and the great thing is I've rigged this so we'll still be able to open up the door to get in because I've actually put them on the door whereas before I used to have to move the lamp and it was a real pain you guys know when we've done live things I've had to move things around and everything else like that so that has taken me the best part of an hour and a half just to jerry-rig that so what I'll do is I'll probably do the vlog and then tonight I'll actually put the proper switch in so we're gonna have an on-off switch just under here and we'll pop one up in there and we'll properly put the power source to it and then I'll wire that into the system which is in there because at the moment it's just on an extension to see um, where it's on one switch so we've got that big switch down on the floor just down there is what powers everything in this cupboard so obviously there's two compressors in there uh, and a few other bits and pieces the hair dryers all motorized in there and everything else so that way I can put the lights to it again so one switch will turn the lot on uh, and we'll be good to go in the morning so there we go a very cheap upgrade because even with the electrical bits bought and all the rest of it it's only actually cost 15 quid to rig that entire thing up because both of those lights i think are sort of fiver each and then another fiver for the switch and the box and everything else like that but there we go that's worked really really well so there we go light system working as i said uh, tonight i'll probably finish it off make it all stable and properly electrics before i know you gurus saying oh chop block shouldn't be doing that and all the rest of it i will do it all properly rest assured but i'm amazed hopefully you guys i did a quick camera check before we came on air and it does look like there is no difference uh, it's not like it's blinding out the cameras these are nicely off and actually i don't know yet i might just tone these down a little bit as i say you can get some filter paper 
and I've got different grades of it uh, and what I do we'll put little covers on them uh, all little frosted perspex uh, which is what is on my big ones just to neutralize it a little bit just to diffuse it and give it a nicer light but really I think those really are very very nice big thanks to Ant he put that up on the actual forum he's got three of them above his bench and they're fantastic and I tell you what when I was testing them and just playing around here Considering when you think I paid £660 plus then another £120 in customs uh, and all the rest of it, it was near 800 quid for two of my LED bank lights. Uh, I think that's quite a lot. When you think those things are a fiver each and I reckon three of those or four of those is probably equivalent to one of these. So if you was to make them up and you'd be easy to put them on to a backing board and put them on and just have two, you'd be good to go. You'd be absolutely set, but it's a very nice clean white light. Now don't get me wrong, that's not like this light is. I'm not saying that you know it's exactly the same, it's not. This light here is obviously specialized and it's all the rest of it. But over there for what that is, I think by the time we just adjust it a little bit, we should be in a situation where we are very, very close to what we got here. But I'm looking at the camera, I can see off on my monitor there. It does look very bright back there, but we're gonna dull that down, bring it in line with all the others and we should be go. So anyway, that's put pay to me trying to get this in primer today, which is a little bit unfortunate. I really did want to get this thing into primer uh, before we actually uh, ended today. But what I'll do is, fear not, I will get that finished off tonight and then in the morning I will do a primer job on this, get it all ready, everything else like that, and then I can get it edited. And obviously part one will complete the entire build. That's the part with this one. It's gonna be a lot more speedy. A lot of you said when we get the feedback you wanted me to push through. I've explained all about the riveting and the various bits and pieces on this one. It's just literally, uh, we're just trying to speed things up. Get things moving, shall we say. So that way I haven't got to spend as long editing and showing you because I can literally head down and get on with it and that's what I did with the, the riveting and sanding. We've shown you this in detail so there's no point really doing it again so what I've done is I've shown you a little bit and then got on with it where normally I'd show you a lot more so that's how we sped things up. So you're not losing anything, I'm not taking shortcuts and everything else like that but generally we're just pushing down in there. I wasn't going to say it but I've got it here, it turned up just before we went on air. Okay but I have got another small delivery has come in and I know you guys love the unboxing things, and I'm guessing what this is. We're expecting loads of deliveries in today. Uh, <laughs> and it is more MRP paint. And there's a reason for this. You guys are buying it by the ton in there. Okay, so I thought I'd better get in there quick. Uh, what I've done is I've completed my uh, selection of colours that I use all the time. Uh, which are predominantly, I can't speak of it, uh, but anyway, that's US colours, REF colours, obviously, and all the Russian stuff, because we didn't have that before, so this fits it. But I've been asked lots and lots of times about, Phil, are you going to be doing their metallics? And at, early, when it first came up, I was like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go through them and, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, have a look later on, but I'm in no rush, we've got them there. But I've had so many people ask me about it that I thought, really, we need to have a look properly right the way through. So um, I've actually gone out and I've got their clear coat as well and some various other bits and pieces uh, down in here. And because everyone rams on about how good it is, I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon as well. So I bought, uh, this is uh, Mr. Mark's setter, Neo. Okay, I haven't got the softener, but I've got the setter. And it's right, it's white and milky and weird, but everyone sings its praises about this. And I remember using it years ago and didn't have a mass success with it, but I've got it again to give it a proper test because decals change, I change and everything else. So I've got that in. So expect a test of that coming up a little bit later. And as I say, I've got all uh, the actual metallics range as well. So we're gonna do a bit of an on test with those. And I know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with AK and all the rest of it. It's just that I thought, what the hell, we'll go the whole hog. If you guys are asking for it, I'm quite happy to test anything you ask me to test. So down in there, I've got another box full of paint, which I'll do a proper unwrapping and showing you about that uh, on tomorrow's vlog. The other thing we got coming up on Friday is these. Now these are the, um, MRP scriber sets as well. So we're gonna be having a look at those. So I'm gonna do that on Friday. So up with you today is the final part, I should have had all this ready really, of this guy. Now I know I've been harping on about this for the last couple of weeks as we've been making our way through and everything else like that. But it's the final part is up. It is fantastic, it's a beautiful kit. As I said, if you're new to armor and you wanna have a go at something, I can highly recommend this kit. It falls together, it's absolutely fantastic. It's probably the easiest piece of armor I've put together ever. 
it is that straightforward. There's no problems with it. The tracks and stuff like that we say about in the build, that's something different. They're a bit of a pain having to glue them in, but I know loads of you have done that and had no problems with it. So I think it was just me being a little bit lazy and probably by the time I'd sort of messed around with all the metal work and doing it like that, you could probably even do it. It's just as quick by using the actual kit parts. So that is up on the site with you. Uh, today. Tomorrow obviously it's kit review day so we're going to get that bit of priming done and everything else like that so it's still going to be a busy day tomorrow and then Friday obviously be having a look around at your stuff and everything else like that. So that's it for today I'm going to leave you with a final reveal blurb of me yapping on about this particular tank so until tomorrow everybody happy modeling take care. Okay and there we go all completely finished off what can I say Tacom, you've really got a good kit here. The actual fit, the way it goes together, the way the actual parts are laid out, everything lends itself to make a fantastic kit. Really, from a skill set point of view, sorry armor guys, but this thing is a doll. It just falls together. My only criticism really is as far as the kit concerned, and yeah, this is where I have to be really picky here. The sprue gates are very, very thick. You do need a good pair of cutters to get through them. My orange scissors, I'll be honest with you, struggled on this one. But from a build point of view, it just falls together. The engineering, the quality of the plastic, everything right the way down to the clear parts and how they fit is absolutely fantastic. The photo etch is nice and thin and seeing these grills down on here now and everything else like that, it really does make for a very nice fit, all of it, which is something sometimes with armor, you get various things and it goes and you might find perhaps the photo etch is a little bit thick, the clear parts are a little bit tacky. Honestly, with this guy, no problems at all. It was absolutely a joy to build. And to be honest, as you've seen, it was actually very straightforward, very, very quick. Didn't take us long at all. So so that enabled us to push on with what I prefer to do, which to be honest is the painting and weathering. Now this particular one, as we can see down here, something a little bit different, we've done it in the Berlin markings. Now actually, to be honest, you would think that something is in the public eye, i.e. it's running around Germany and all the rest of it, it would be quite easy to find reference photos of this. In reality, very difficult because obviously the age, they were in the 70s, photography wasn't as widespread, so there isn't as many photos of this particular one to go with for references as we thought. The only thing we were assured was that the, the actual, the way that MIG called them out with their instructions was a little bit off, okay? Only in a few areas, so obviously I took my cue from people who have actually worked on these things, that actually crewed these things and everything else to tell us really about things with different colors. And now I can slightly understand why perhaps MIG got it a little bit wrong. For instance, the underside being in NATO black and the deck and everything else, actually certain photos you look at it, it does look like it might be olive drab, but unfortunately it's not, it's NATO black. So that's what we did with this particular one. We went through and popped it down and everything else like that. Then in with the camo work, far easier actually to do it as I did the second half if you like uh, and doing it cube by cube. Just mask each one off and just work your way through. It's easier than trying to over complicate it and put perhaps all the white down and then we'll mask it off them to, for the gray to go down and everything. Far too complicated. By the time I had done all of that I've made so many mistakes it was easier just to do each individual section, work through it, I can reuse the tape, uh, reuse the business cards and we can just lay it down and put it down and actually once we got on a roll this camo didn't take too long at all. Again, it's all open to interpretation. The colors, I just actually used primer white, primer gray, and we used this mix up, which was just a mixture of flat earth, uh, and then obviously um, XF69 NATO gray, uh, NATO brown, sorry. 50-50, spray it on and we go with it. Again, it all changed totally. And this is what we say a lot when we talk about these things, is actually about the weathering. Because the weathering on this particular one, it changes everything, knocks it all down. A simple wash right the way over it, again, brought it all the way down. Then going in with a little bit of grime, again, it knocks it all down, okay? And then we actually went along with a little bit of metallics to do around the top deck areas, things like that. Give a little bit of a rub, everything and it was absolutely fine. It all comes together and worked extremely well to give us a nice weighted look and everything else like that. So no problems with those at all. Then it was a simple job of a little bit of detail work, a few little enamels, and then we came around with it and went through everything with a little bit of pigment just to rub it around, just to give it a more urban environment look, for want of a better word. Instead of being thick and mud and everything else, this thing's on road all day long, doesn't do anything apart from that. So it enabled us to go along and give it sort of a traffic film type look by using say, some light earth on there, a little bit of sand just to lighten it up a little bit and everything else, and it went right the way through. It has been probably one of my favorite armored builds that I have done over the last couple of years, purely because the kit is itself is really really good and it goes together so very very easily no problem at all. 
The only thing we did separate to the actual kit itself was aftermarket tracks. So actually we used some metal aftermarket tracks. They went down really, really well. I thought, and I, you know, I've always wanted to use them. This is the first time I've used them and everything else like that. I thought they were gonna be a lot more work than they actually are. By the time you flapped around doing plastic tracks, I think metal ones are just as quick. Metal ones give it that thing. They give it the weight. Picking this model up, it has that heavy feel to it, the weighted feel. And I must admit, there's no real, if you're doing it on a diorama, let's face it, metal tracks are gonna give you natural shape. If you're gonna be doing plastic ones, they're never gonna have that look, that hang and everything else like that. So if you have got a kit and you just wanna take it to that slightly next level, I would highly recommend getting some aftermarket white metal tracks for it. Spend the time, treat them like a couple of evenings in front of the TV or get some good music on. And actually they're not as hard work as they actually look. When you've got a big bag, it's very, very daunting. When you start to move on with it, they're absolutely great. And the tracks that I used went together with no problems at all. It's been a great build. I have thoroughly enjoyed this bit of armor. And if you can't tell, I love the scheme. I love the weathering we've done. And I thoroughly enjoyed doing the build along with you guys. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, join me again next time. <music>